Hi, Armored Pants here, and I have uh, another video for you in the German TD line, the Grill 15. And we have a complete guide as always, and we will start with Blitzhanger.com, looking at the tech spec. Now, uh, somebody asked me through the Facebook page how you can use Blitzhanger, especially if you don't know the name of the tank you're looking for. So, simple ways like this, you just type in the name of the tank, if you know the tank, Grill 15, and it pops up here in the yellow box, you just click on that. Or, if you don't know the name of the tank, we know the type of tank it is and the tier you can select the uh, type of tank then the tier then the nationality and then you see you get a list and there you select the grill 15 as we're going to do here so there's two ways to do it so if you don't know the name of the tank you can also still use blitz hanger uh, for those of you who use a lot you know this of course but i was asked that question so just thought i'd share that with some of the um less experienced members or somebody uh, who's uh, new to blitzhanger.com so the grill 15. Grill as in uh, German for cricket because it does look a little bit like a cricket. 150 millimeter gun on this tank is amazing. Fantastic ground for all 640 plus. 11.3 second reload with gun rammer makes it very good. Um, as a, you know, and it's a better gun, better reload, better handling than many other TDs in tier 10. Look here at the AP rounds, you get 640 plus. Um, good penetration to uh, over 270 with um, heat rounds you're gonna go up to um, over 300 and with HE you've got 75 millimeters of pen and you're gonna do 960 plus alpha rolls so basically um, sides and backs of medium tanks um, other grills waffle tractors light tanks you're gonna do massive alpha rolls and you're gonna see one delivered onto me in the game we're gonna look at in gameplay now setting it up because it's TD I'm using supercharge and I'm going to use a um, refined gun. Um, I'm using improved assembly because it has no armor. Um, and when you use supercharge and refined gun, you get 1,755 millimeters per second of muzzle velocity, which is fantastic and really, really good for a TD in tier 10. If you remember the Object 268 uh, review we did, it's almost twice the muzzle velocity of the Object 268. Just think about that in terms of penetration. Now this tank has no gun depression, only it's 4 degrees, right? Uh, but it has 24 degrees of elevation. That's very important when you consider uh, the positions you can adopt as a TD. As a limited aiming arc too, be very aware of this. It only has plus minus 50 degrees. And that's different from the Waffle Tractor, because the Waffle Tractor has 360 or 180 each way. You can go right around. And if, you're, if you look at, if you remember the video we did of uh, Salmon's um, Mastery game, he made a lot of shots firing off the back to increase his gun depression. But you can't do this tank so it's limited it's fast it's 50 kilometers an hour just think about that that's the same speed as an object 140 right so it's a very fast tank backward it's fast 215 has great uh, weight to power ratio too which basically if you're wondering what that means it's how it accelerates so from a standstill it moves off very quickly traverse speed is good but you can see on a uh, soft terrain it's slow so if you're in water and um, you know as you may be on many maps um, going through creek beds or whatever like that to traverse speed on it is really slow so just be aware of that um, now this tank is in my opinion probably the most difficult tank destroyer to play in the game why well because it's a tier 10 so therefore you're up playing with the best players and the biggest guns right so that's a given right but also this tank is extremely unforgiving looking here at the armor profile it has no armor right whatsoever it also has that limited aiming arc. It also has no gun depression. Um, and that means that this tank is very limited in, the sh it, in its shot selection, right? If you're looking here, we're looking here now at the maximum gun depression of this tank. It's virtually nothing, right? It can fire at something more or less just straight ahead of it. And um, if you back up onto a hill though, and we looked at the elevation there, we're seeing here the limited um, traverse arc, by the way, that's it, plus minus 50 degrees, that's it. So you cannot fire behind you. So therefore, if you're in a brawl, you need to move your tracks as well as the turret, uh, which you should be doing anyway, of course, but just be aware of that. You can't turn around completely. And as I said, that's different from the waffle tractor, which you've played before. Now we're looking at the gun elevation, and why is this important? Well, because if you back up onto a hill, as you do in TDs many times, you can still fire at a lot of targets, even when the tank is backed up at quite a steep angle. So that is one advantage of this tank, it's something to bear in mind. Um, and you can see here, it's quite a lot of gun elevation on it. 
Um, now this doesn't make up for the lack of gun depression of course, but it does allow you to adopt some positions in this TD that you couldn't adopt in other TDs. So you can back up onto a hill, at even at a pretty steep angle, and you're going to be able to fire um, into many targets straight ahead. Now in terms of tactics and how to play this tank, obviously you can adopt um, traditional TD positions, sit at the back, um, wait for your lights and meds to spot up the enemy and then strike to farm some damage and with the gun you have and the muzzle velocity that's a, an excellent tactic in this tank you can also and it, by the way if you're starting with this tank i would recommend you do that because the tank is completely unforgiving if you get caught out in the open in this thing you'd be one-shotted by so many things at tier 10 and tier 9. so if you're inexperienced or if you're playing this tank first i'd recommend that sit at the back try to farm some damage when you get a bit more experience, you can uh, move with your heavies or with your mediums to support them. But please only do this when you get more familiar with handling this tank and playing it. Because, as I said, if you the nearer you go to the enemy, the more likely you are to get spotted, the more likely you are to get hit. And you can be really destroyed in this, in this tank. You're going to see a game um, in Alpenstadt's Supremacy game where I get hit for almost, I think it's way over a thousand HP, uh, just with one shot. And that's how vulnerable this tank can be. Um, this tank also is difficult to play because it has uh, has a limited view range, right? It's 270 something, right? So this means that um, unless your lights and mediums are helping you, spotting up the enemy, you can get into real trouble in this tank. And by the way, finishing with zero in this tank is quite it's quite uh, possible. And it happened to me several times when I was uh, shooting videos for this. In there, I also got a couple of mastery games, um, you know, and you know, I did some big damage. Like I did, like almost six thousand in one game. Um, the game I'm going to show you is not a mastery game, by the way. I had a couple of choose from. I also got a couple from a couple of other players. But I wanted to show you this. It's a first class game, but I wanted to show you because it basically encompasses everything about the grill, but also everything which is great and bad about Blitz as well. So I just thought I'd show you this game. It's a really interesting game. Um, now I'm just going through the equipment layout here. So you can see, you can use the um, chocolate bar to get up the view range, but um, really it doesn't help you that much. You're still going to be way below the view range of light tanks. Um, now, in terms of the equipment layout, um, you can see what I'm using here, right? I'm using improved assembly, I'm using engine accelerator, refined gun, toolbox, consumable delivery system, improved optics, um, or you, but you could use camouflage if you want to. Uh, you know, I would leave that up to you it doesn't really make a difference because if you get spotted up you're going to get spotted up anyway you're still going to get spotted up by a light tank and um, if your light tanks are not spotting them up and i'm going to use gun rammer of course to get that um reload to 11.3 seconds um, i'm running the um, legendary camo the troublemaker if you're going to play this tank a lot you might consider it if not uh, i think there's a raider camo available now as well but really it's only if you're going to play it a lot otherwise you know it's necessary um, you can see here though the length of the barrel on this gun is what gives it such fantastic muzzle velocity. You can see there there's some barrel on that gun and the gun itself is very reliable and you're going to see that in this game and you can do a lot of snapshots and things. But going back to why this tank is so difficult to play, if you're a me you can't really influence this game on your own right now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the setup. I mean I've played quite a lot with the grill across different accounts so you know I'm not going to take my own advice and sit back and just try to farm damage I'm actually going to go to see and support the heavies uh, I think they might need my support there by looking at the setup so this is what I'm going to do and you'll see how fast the tank is and how quickly it can get there now um, why this tank is so difficult to play because it has limited view range if your meds and lights don't go and spot up the enemy um, if you have meds and light players who don't know what they're doing you're going to be in serious trouble because if the other team's meds and lights, particularly if they have a light tank that has a view range, let's say they have a bat chat, which a view range over 300 meters, right? He has about 35 to 40 meter more view range than you. That means he can come along. If he's a good player, he's doing what he should do and spotting up the enemy. He spots you up, you don't see him. You're lighted up for the entire enemy team. And if they've got a Yag, a Yagaru, another grill, uh, Death Star or something like that, you can be one-shotted before you even have a chance to even know where the enemy are, let alone fire a shot. Now, I wanted to show you this. I put up a shot on here. Now, look at this. See that bounce? You cannot expect to get bounces like that in this tank. That is pure luck. Now, 
I made a bit of luck by rolling back, and you should do that in this tank if you're, particularly if you're up near the enemy, fire and move. It's no guarantee you're going to get a bounce, in fact 90% of the time you're not. But, if you're rolling back like that, after firing shots, you can, if you're lucky, get a bounce off that front part there, which is raised uh, just below the turret. Um, and you saw that in effect there, but you know, don't <laughs> come back and say, hey Armored, you told me I was going to get bounces and I got smashed. 90%, maybe 99% of the time, it's not going to happen. But you can get lucky, and that was a very lucky bounce there. And I just wanted to show you that. I wanted, it's one of the things in this game that I wanted to show you. Now, I just wanted to show you this again. Looking at the replay there, the snapshot. The gun is great for a snapshot. Over short distance like that, that 1.7K um, um, muzzle velocity really comes into effect. Again, you see how accurate the gun is. It delivers, and over short distances like that, that muzzle velocity just pumps those rounds uh, into the enemy armor and there's you know there's hardly anything you can't pen even with normal ap rounds with this gun if you aim correctly now we've cleared this flank we've captured c um, and i'm gonna move i'm gonna leave that mouse behind you saw there i was kind of using his armor to protect myself i'm still on full hp i'm leaving him behind because i need to go and help my team now i need to get into the fray uh, there's no point sitting back there, so I need to go up here and try to get in some shots to help the team. Now I've been spotted up, so I'm going to crash in here to see if I can reset my camo. Um, but they're coming; they're, they're, gonna, they're coming for us now. Um, so I'm probably not going to be able to reset my camo because I'm just going to get spotted. Now that IS-7, um, he's he actually has a decent enough game, uh, but they're all targeting him and me now at this point. I missed this shot. I fluffed another shot on that T-54 as well, by the way, later on. Um, but going back to the original point I was making, you really need your team to help you, particularly your light tanks and medium tanks. If they don't do their jobs, you are not going to have a good game. And you know, there are some players who will say, oh well, you know, I can carry any game. Well, maybe they can, I don't know. See, that, that T-54 got really lucky there and that bounce again. Maybe they can. But it's very, very difficult in this tank. And, you know, um, I prefer to be honest with you and say, look, if your team is not doing their job, if they don't spot up the enemy for you, there's not much you can do in this tank because you're so vulnerable, right? Really are vulnerable. I haven't even mentioned the fact, by the way, that you can get rammed by everything. Even light tanks are going to ram you and do huge damage. You see there, I took a round off that grill. He's behind me. We're surrounded on all sides here now. So I decided I'm going to push forward and take out this bat chat. Um, and why this, now I just wanted to uh, show you there, because I switched up to HE so I wouldn't get a bounce on him. Now look at that alpha roll on me there. Massive alpha roll, 1040 DP. Took me from being relatively healthy right down to 12 hit points. I mean, that's just how vulnerable this tank is. That was a HE round from that grill. Now, there's some massive luck coming in here, and this is something which is not supposed to happen in Blitz. I get a bounce off uh, HE here, look at this. I'm gonna slow it down, look at that. That's a bounce, you can see from the fire bloom, that was a HE round, bounced. Just damaged my gun, he probably maybe hit me in the barrel. But really, even the splash damage from the barrel should have taken me out. And look at that, they take me out, but we win the game. And that is one of the closest games of Blitz I've had in a long time. I don't think you can really get much closer without losing. I think that is probably the finest line between winning and losing I've played in a long time. And I just thought that game was great. Even though it wasn't a master game, um, I had a master game which was very boring. I was just sitting at the back and farmed a lot of damage. But this was a great game because it showed everything about this tank and everything which is great about Blitz. I will take the lucky player from the IS-7 because I have to admit there was a whole load of luck involved in winning that game. And um, I give the other grill a worthy opponent. He did a good job for his team. And they were very unlucky to lose. And I think that's one of the other things about Blitz, right? You can play a great game and still lose. Um, and you can, you know, because they were really unlucky, they should have won that game. Uh, but that game there had everything. It had lucky bounces on the grill. It showed its uh, snapshot abilities. It showed the big alpha rolls. It also showed its vulnerabilities. You know, that massive alpha roll I took from the other grill could have even taken me out. They were unlucky that didn't kill me. So I think that was a great game of Blitz and a great game for the grill, illustrating all its bad points and its good points, which we will now recap. So this is a difficult tank to play. Zero armor and you're a HE magnet. Everyone's going to be spamming HE at you. 
and if you get zero damage in this tank there's no shame in it it's quite easily to end the game with zero damage and that's just the nature of this tank the next game you might end up with 5k damage you're really reliant on your lights and meds to spot for you if they don't you're not going to have a good game you need your lights and meds to spot for you um, but it is an excellent as a traditional TD. You can farm damage from the back with that gun and that reload, right? And it doesn't matter how far the shot is with that muzzle velocity, you're going to make it. Therefore, use supercharge and refined gun. Get that muzzle velocity up to 1755 meters per second. 150 millimeter gun is great. It's very reliable. You can use snapshots as we saw there on the bat chat. Um, and, you know, um, but it does have some drawbacks, limited aiming arc. It's not like the waffle tractor before it. Just be aware that it's only plus minus 50 degrees. Run two repair kits. Don't get permatract in this thing. You really don't want to get permatract in this out in the open. Open tier 10 guns. Load up an HE for lights. Also, anything that has below 300 hit points, fire a HE round at the splash damage to take it out. And um, don't forget the tank is fast. Um, so when you get more experience you can go you can you go support your heavies oh go support your mediums and lights if you want to um, but please wait until you're a bit more experienced because the tank is so unforgiving you know you saw there the armor it just doesn't exist plus you can be rammed you know when you're a HE magnet so you know just be aware of that but also beware and prepare yourself for the fact that you're going to have zero damage in some games you're just not going to have good games and it's just nothing you can do about it and in my humble opinion this is the most difficult TD to play in Blitz because it's tier 10 and because of all its limitations so please be aware of that before you start playing too thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it I hope you found it useful cheers mush and I guess all that remains for me to say is pants off mm -hmm.